Hey folks, Blackcross here, and welcome back to another video game review. In today's review, I'm going to be reviewing Unicorn Overlord. This was another game released by Atlas and developed by Vanillaware. Now, if you're familiar with Vanillaware, chances are you already know what this game is. But for those that don't know what from, uh, Vanillaware is, these are the same people that made games like, for example, Dragon's Crown, uh, as well as Grim Grimora, and of course, uh, probably most famously, Odin Sphere. With that being said, though, I saw this game and I saw this was going to be really cool. And I definitely wanted to give it a try whenever it came out. And it finally came out, finally played it, beat it. What do I think of it? Well, it's kind of interesting because on the one hand, I thought it was going to be one thing, but it was still something, but not quite as full as I thought it was going to be. At first, I thought that whenever you entered into combat, I figured it was going to be a sort of like a turn-based type game. It kind of is, but more uh, automatic than manual, you know what I mean? But I'm getting ahead of myself. First and foremost, let's talk about the story and then we'll get on into the gameplay itself. And what is the story? Well, the story is, is that there is this character by the name of Lane, who basically is kind of shunned out of his own home kingdom due to the fact that someone basically took over the entire landscape. Actually, not just their country, but the entire continent itself. So years later, Elaine and people who not only helped him train, but also grew up with him as well, are now joined together in order to take down the evil forces itself. And basically try to take back the kingdom as he is, of course, the heir to the throne, being that of heir to the unicorn ring itself. So you're basically traveling the entire landscape in order to take back what's been stolen from you and basically as you're going through it you're also recruiting people as well to help aid you and you can either recruit people by basically either running into them or in some cases either sparing them to which case they will actually aid you in battle or to recruit them straight up i was actually very surprised because knowing Fenellaware. I didn't think there was going to be as much voice acting as there was going to be in this game, but there was actually a lot more voice acting that was involved. I was very impressed with that. And this also adds a layer of storytelling to the game itself by basically having all these voice actors and stuff like that. I was, I was very pleasantly surprised by how deaf it was. And, you know, despite how the game's layout is, it can be a lengthy game, actually, in all honesty. Despite, depending on how fast you want to go with it or how slow it is, it's a very lengthy game. So what is it that you actually do? Well, like I said before, you're basically going through the entire landscape, basically not only retaking land and stuff like that but you're also recruiting soldiers in order to help aid you in battle and each soldier will have a different attribute and different unit command and not only that but also different abilities both in combat as well as moving through the field itself some units are able to endure certain traps or barricades and able to break them off easily. Some are able to fly thanks to their griffins. Some are able to travel faster thanks on horseback. And some have the ability to aid units from a distance such as spellcasters and archers. And some of them are able to heal them much like healers. There's a lot of strategy that is in place with this game and there's a lot of customizations when it comes down to it. Both in terms of movesets as well as the commands, how to initiate said commands, and so on and for so forth. So there's a lot of customization when it comes down to it. At the end of the day, the question isn't so much, how do you beat the game? The question is, how do you plan to go about your next battle? And there's a lot. Some of them can be relatively done within like, say, oh, probably about 5-10 minutes, and some of them take about 30 minutes, depending on how long or how big the field is. And some of the fields can be lengthy, what they can be. Like, whenever you see the overcast of the field itself, you start to think to yourself, you can go, am I able to beat all these guys? Chances are, they're not too bad, especially depending on your overall difficulty choice. There is no difficulty trophy, so that makes it easier for people who just wants to play the game and end up actually platinuming it, because that's what I ended up doing. I ended up platinuming it really easy after I beat the game. Like, there was like a handful of trophies that I still had to unlock, all of which were easy to attain, and boom, I got the trof got the platinum trophy. This, this was a fun platinum. But what I really like about Unicorn Overlord is that 
how much you can actually do with this game how much there is to offer and how big the game can be and depending on how you want to go about things depends on how much uh, development you want to go into into either creating your army or in terms of creating your overall characters and stuff like that because it's interesting of how on the one hand yes you can recruit soldiers as you play through the story but you can also recruit soldiers just by randomly recruiting random people and what you do there is that you go into one of these uh, stations in which where you either upgrade your units or you actually hire new units and these new units can be any class depending on what you've already unlocked at this point in time and you basically create your own units thing is though is that depending on how far you get into the game you most likely will not need that in fact i felt like i rarely ever needed to recruit a new soldier i think depending on how you want to go about your strategy and depending on the challenges you may put yourself through this may actually make a different layer to like uh, people who just wants to do random challenges whenever they play through the game and stuff like that like only using archers or only using uh, uh, soldiers or only using healers because healers actually do have an attack pattern so it's it's interesting but it's also a different kind of building mechanism depending on how you want to go about it even though the main characters themselves have unique abilities that actually help them through the game you can also create uh, different characters in order to basically strengthen your units depending on how you want to go about strengthening them entirely and that's the part that I like the most is that how freely customized you can make your units and how overpowered you could be if you so choose to while the overall game is great and everything I think one of the things that kind of slows it down from being good is that that's all you're doing is that you're basically creating the units and you're just kind of moving them to uh, area to area in order to overtake an area entirely over in ultimately either retaking certain uh, command posts or just defeating the actual captain itself and again it's one of those things where it's like that's basically it you're just basically picking the unit and you're telling them where to go you're not actually being involved in the combat itself although Depending on how you want to go about it, you can either watch the actual cinematic combat itself take place or you can just skip over it and just kind of speed through the levels themselves. It's very fast paced or it can be slow paced depending on how you want to go about it. There's so many stuff that you can do with this. You can speed up the entire process. You can just skip over co uh, combat. It's very fast paced if you want it to be. And what I like about it is how fully customizable the controls are you can go into the options and later on in the game the main character gets to unlock a horse where he's able to ride around and stuff making him a little bit faster but the thing is that the main options basically is that you have to hold the circle button in order to run well there's another option that you can actually select in the main menu on the option menu where you can actually choose to have him running all the time without actually holding the button so in other words once you are in the overload uh, the over world you can just roam around as freely as you want to it's it's really cool i love that i guess depending the best way to explain unicorn overlord would probably be that of fire emblem even though i hadn't played a single fire emblem game yet this is probably the closest thing i could think of whenever i play this game it's kind of like that in the sense of where you do actually bond with the individual characters and later on in the game you do actually have a choice of being able to marry one of the females that you want to marry Ultimately, I really liked it, Unicorn Overlord. I really do. This was actually one of the funnest tactical RPGs. And in my personal opinion, if it doesn't win a best strategy game, at least let it been at least let it win best art direction. Because it's beautiful. I love the art art of this game. And of course with Vanillaware, you expect what to see and it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's just so cool to see it. The story, the characters. The, the gameplay, I, I love it all. Which is why I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Again, not everyone's going to like this style of gaming, but if you are a fan of strategy RPGs, this is definitely one to definitely look into. It's fun, it's unique, and it can be challenging depending on how you go about it. And with all the customizations that you can do with the units and the characters themselves, there is no end limit. You can just basically do whatever you please with the game and just create as much of you want and make as big as your army as you want so 
I love it. It's really cool and awesome. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Black Cross signing off. Catch you guys later. I am your shield. My magic is you. <laughs>